started on my phone and can't transfer progress to my computer? This game sucks. Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy. Let's add saving game progress fast with Firebase. You'll need a Firebase account and project, so go to firebase.google.com to set that up. Follow the on-screen instructions to create your project and then wait for Firebase to create resources. It might take a while. Next thing is to create an app. Choose web app and follow the on-screen instructions. Wait a little bit and then we get the quick start instructions. Install the Firebase NPM package into your project and keep these instructions open. We'll need the config object a little bit later. You can also find these in the project set. We're now at a fork in the road for how we can use Firebase in our phaser game. We can directly import and use Firebase in the scenes that need it, make a Firebase service class that keeps all Firebase logic in one place and use it like a singleton, or make a Phaser 3 plugin that manages all the Firebase logic. And we're going with choice number three. A plugin is just a class that extends phaser.plugins.base plugin. Let's import initialize app from Firebase slash app at the top, copy over the Firebase config from the quick start instructions. In the constructor, we'll call initialize app and pass in the Firebase config. We'll use the app variable shortly. Now, none of these config values need to be made secret but you still may want to store them as environment variables depending on how your app is structured. First, let's add this plugin to our game config. This will be a global scene plugin so that we can use Phaser's simple syntax style to access our Firebase plugin from any scene using this dot Firebase. Now TypeScript won't know about this new Firebase property that we're dynamically adding into the scene. We can fix that by adding more typing information. Add this to any existing .d.ts file or simply create a new one. This is called declaration merging and it lets us add more information to types that we did not create. For example, VS Code can now give us intelligent code completion for this dot Firebase inside a Phaser 3 scene. Pretty cool, right? Now let's create a Firestore database to save and retrieve data. Find Firestore in the side menu and click create a database. We'll start in test mode to make things simple and then add security a little later on in this video. For location, we'll use the default US Central. Back in our Firebase plugin class, let's import get Firestore from Firebase slash Firestore. Make a class property called DB. We'll type it as Firestore, so import that as well. Now in the constructor, we'll call get Firestore and pass in app. To save and retrieve data, we'll need two methods. First, let's add an async save game data method that takes a user ID and some data. We're using version nine of the Firebase SDK. And fun fact, it has a similar module first design to Phaser 4. Now Phaser 4 is an early development and things can change. But the functional approach that you see here is a preview of what Phaser 4 might feel like. Head back to the top and import set doc and doc from Firebase slash Firestore. Then use it like this. We're using a set doc instead of add doc so that we can control the key of the document. We want to key the user's game data document by their user ID instead of some random ID that Firebase generates. This way we can easily look up a user's game data by their user ID. Now, if you're wondering where a user's ID is going to come from, then keep watching. It'll all make sense in the end. Now to get data, we can add an async load user data method that takes a user ID. We'll need to import get doc and document snapshot for typing from Firebase slash Firestore. Then in the load game data method, we can use get doc to get a document in the game data collection under the given user ID key. This will be returned as a document snapshot. Calling the data function will return the saved data. Now you have the core pieces to load and save whether your game auto saves, has save points, or allows multiple save profiles. But we're not done yet. Our database is currently as secure as accounts that use the most popular passwords. Go to your Firestore database and select rules. We need to update it to only allow reading and writing if the request is authenticated. To add authentication, we need Firebase Auth. This will mean that users must have an account. They can create it using email password, other sign-in providers, or anonymously. Let's tackle email and password first as an overview of how the whole thing works. Then we'll look at anonymous login. Go to the authentication section and click get started. Then enable email and password and save it. Back in our Firebase plugin, import get auth and create user with email and password. 
from Firebase slash auth, and then create an auth class property and call get auth in the constructor. Then create user with email and password can be used in an async create user with email method. The user object will have basic profile information like display name or profile picture, but also a UID, which is a unique identifier. This is the ID to use when loading or saving user data. Now that users have accounts, we also need to let them log in so that they can continue their game from any device. Let's import sign in with email and password from Firebase slash auth and then add an async sign in user with email method that calls it. Players who create a new user or log in will stay logged in the next time they come back to the game. The on off state changed function from Firebase will trigger when the auto login is complete. And then this.off.current user will have user information. Your game likely has a loading screen that goes to a title screen. A user will most likely be auto logged in during the loading screen. We can check for that in the title screen by adding a get user function that simply returns this.off.current user. But if the current user doesn't exist because our game loaded too fast or we don't have a loading screen, then we'll need to pass a callback to on auth state changed. Let's import on auth state changed from Firebase slash auth and then create an on logged in callback class property. Along with that, we'll want an auth state changed unsubscribe property to remove listening to auth state changes when the plugin is destroyed. Down in the constructor, we can give on auth state changed a callback that calls this.on logged in callback if it is set and there is a user object. If the user object is null, it means the user logged out. Now, to set the logged in callback, we can add an on logged in method and set on logged in callback to that passed in callback. Then in our title screen scene, we can do something like this that goes straight to the game scene if the user is logged in or wait for a login. Your game's UI for creating an account and signing in will just call the create and sign in methods that we just created. But most users won't want to create an account before playing, and we can solve that by using anonymous accounts. First, we need to turn that on from the Firebase dashboard under sign in method in authentication. Import sign in anonymously from Firebase slash auth, and then add an async sign in anonymously method. Call this method where you would allow the player to skip creating an account or logging in. But note that anonymous accounts cannot be used to load saved progress on another device. When the player is ready, they'll have to create a real account so that we can convert the anonymous account into a permanent one. Check out the Firebase docs on anonymous accounts to see how you can do that. Fun game, but a little reason to keep playing. Doesn't even have a basic leaderboard. So how about adding a leaderboard for players to compete against each other on high score? With all that we've done so far, it'll be pretty easy. To add high scores, let's import add doc and collection from Firebase slash Firestore. Then we can create an async add high scores method that takes a name and score. This will add high score documents to a high scores collection with randomly assigned keys. Because each player can have multiple high score entries, we don't want to key this by user ID. To retrieve a list of scores in descending order, we need to import query order by limit and get docs from Firebase slash Firestore, and then create a high scores method that creates a query on the high scores collection. We use order by to sort the entries by score from largest to smallest or DEC for descending, and then limit the results to 10. To execute the query, we pass it to get docs, which returns a query snapshot. To get the data, we can map over all the docs and call the data function. Use these functions to submit new high scores and show a leaderboard. Love competing for high score on my work and home computers. Great game. Let me know in the comments below if you want more on working with game backends either as a service like Firebase or something that you host yourself. For more on backend game development, check out this video over here.